This is the Battle of China. This, the great city of Shanghai on a September day in 1937. This, the fearful beginning of a new kind of war. This, the first mass bombing from the air of a helpless civilian population. Why? Why are these innocent Chinese men, women, children to die beneath the hail of Japanese bombs? The peace-loving Japanese didn't want a war if they could get their land grabs without one. But this time they were in for a rude surprise. This time, instead of protesting or negotiating, the Chinese struck back. And not in the north, but at Shanghai, where the Japs least expected. Meanwhile, enraged at the very idea of anyone resisting the Imperial Japanese might, the Japs took their vengeance upon the civilian population of the city. A city without guns or planes to defend itself and deliberately slaughtered thousands from the air. Thus, the Japanese introduced the world to a new kind of war, a war of deliberate terrorization, of deliberate mass murder, of deliberate frightfulness. And to the aid of China came volunteers from other lands, men who pledged themselves to fight against tyranny and oppression no matter where. Americans like the legendary Colonel Chennault and his Flying Tigers, who, with their few American planes, were knocking down enemy planes at the fantastic ratio of 20 nips to one of their own. And the blood plasma of new supplies flowed steadily over China's lifeline to the sea, protected by Colonel Chennault's incredible Flying Tigers. Division after division of picked Chinese troops are being flown in our planes from China to India. In the jungle on either side, American and Chinese patrols protect the road and strike at the Japs. Their supplies and ammunition brought in by plane and parachute. From fields in India, an air transport command plane takes off every six minutes, loaded with artillery, jeeps, ammunition, men and supplies for the armies of China. Over this Burma Skyway, over this hump of mountains 16,000 feet high, more tonnage is being flown into China than was ever trucked in over the old Burma Road. And in the skies over China, Japan faces new opposition. Young Chinese, many of them trained on the fields of Arizona, New Mexico, California, fly and fight beside their American comrades. The fighters and bombers of the Chinese Air Force and those of General Chenault's 14th Air Force today fly far and wide over China. Hitting enemy concentrations, smashing their sea lanes along the China coast. The same people that moved a nation 2,000 miles that built the Burma Road are building airfields out of stones, mud, and patient, tireless hands. The oldest and the youngest of the world's great nations, together with the British Commonwealth, fight side by side in the struggle that is as old as China herself, the struggle of freedom against slavery civilization against barbarism, good against evil. Upon their victory depends the future of mankind. We in China, like you, want a better world, not for ourselves alone, but for all mankind. And we must have it.